Today I'm going to be reviewing the new Recolor Vectors feature found in the beta of Adobe Firefly. This is a handy tool that allows you to quickly and easily recolor vector graphics using just a text prompt. I'll demonstrate recoloring various types of vector graphics and share my opinion on the quality of the output. If you're curious about what Firefly is, check out my review of it. Let's go ahead and get into recoloring something. To get started with Adobe Firefly, you'll need to first apply to join the beta. Once you've been accepted, log into your Adobe account and go to firefly.adobe.com. Next, go to the Recolor Vector section. You'll need some SVG files to work with. If your files are in an AI format, just go into Illustrator and choose Save As, then SVG. You can use the Upload button or drag and drop an SVG file to upload it to Adobe Firefly. I'll start with a simple graphic of an avatar. Once uploaded, I'll need to enter a text prompt to describe the color changes I'd like to make. Don't get too fancy with your wording here because there is only so much that this feature can do. Start with simple color combinations like green and red or describe a color palette like forest, tropical, or Halloween. You can also describe color harmonies like monochrome, analogous, and complementary, but there is also a separate feature for that which we will come back to. Let's go with blue and green for now. After processing, four iterations of the design will appear. If you don't like any of these, you can resubmit the prompt by refreshing or changing the wording of the prompt. As you can see, the colors have been modified to what I requested. It won't always be perfect, there may be some unexpected colors involved, but I think it does a pretty good job of recoloring my avatar. The color choices are great in terms of being balanced and cohesive. I don't see any colors that are too dark, too light, or over or undersaturated. Some of the original color may even be retained, like the gray of the skin color, for example. It seems like Firefly can tell which areas are highlights and shadows and chooses colors that are appropriate. For example, the highlights on the skin are more vibrant. If you happen to see anything you'd like to keep, I recommend downloading it now because you may accidentally refresh the images and never get that exact color combination again since the results are random. You can see that white and black were not affected by the recoloring. If you actually do want black and white recolored, then scroll down the options on the right and disable preserve black and white. The images will refresh, and now black and white may be replaced with something else. Very cool. Let's try Halloween as the prompt. Now I get some spooky iterations. I was expecting to get a bunch of hideous orange and black examples, but I get recoloring that is more subjective with a variety of moods. I love how easily I can create different versions of my avatar without having to do the tedious work of selecting each layer and changing it manually, or trying to use the clunky recolor feature in Adobe Illustrator. These color schemes are so good, it feels difficult to choose just one. If you're having trouble deciding, you may want to download a few of your favorites and then place them side by side in Adobe Illustrator to help you make your final decision. Let's explore more of the options on the right. These can supplement your text prompt, or you can use them on their own to recolor the image. The sample prompts will replace your current prompt. Let's cycle through some of them to see how they affect my illustration. The titles are very evocative and can help you better understand what sorts of prompts work well for describing a color scheme. Let's change the prompt back to Halloween. Below that is a menu for Harmony. You can choose from Complementary, Analogous, Triad, Split Complementary, and Square, also known as Tetradic. I'll just quickly preview each of these modes, but if you'd like a more in-depth explanation about color harmonies, check out my video on that. These harmonies complement your current text prompt. You can see that they appear as modifiers next to your prompt. You cannot apply these modifiers without a prompt. However, it is possible to use them as a prompt by typing it in. Let's select the analogous modifier. Analogous means that colors next to the target color will be chosen. If the target color is red, then colors like yellow, orange, and magenta may be chosen. But occasionally you may find that a non-analogous color is thrown in here and there. Let's clear the modifier and type in analogous as the prompt. When I apply a harmony this way, Firefly may attempt to preserve some of the original colors and will base the other color choices on that. For instance, the hair color remains a reddish color in some of the iterations. 
The downside is that the colors may stray away from the prompt a bit more. As you can see, some colors are appearing that are not analogous. Still, these are some neat looking results. Missing from the list of harmonies is monochromatic, but there are other ways to get that result. You can add just a single color to your prompt, for example purple. Now I get iterations in monochromatic purple. I can also use black and white or grayscale as my prompt to get a grayscale recoloring, but simply asking for gray is good enough. I like that each color channel has a different luminosity. For example, the skin and hair vary in brightness, which allows me to choose the version with the best contrast. The next option is color, which contains several swatches. I'm not sure why these specific colors were chosen, but it does feel odd that a custom color cannot be selected. With gray as my prompt, I'll click on the green swatch to mix it with my current color scheme. You'll see the swatch appears as a modifier next to my prompt. The iterations will refresh, and at least one of them should have green mixed into the colors. If I add azure, now at least one of the iterations will have some green and blue. Why the color doesn't apply to all of the iterations, I don't know. If I remove the colors by either clicking on the swatches or the modifiers beside the prompt, the iterations will update again. For some reason, there is still remnants of the color in one of the examples. Refresh might clear those colors, but if not, I'll need to enter a new unique prompt or refresh the web browser and re-upload my SVG to start over. I'll enter monochrome brown as my prompt, and next I'll add some scarlet to it. Now, more than one of the iterations have been affected. So as you can see, the results can be a bit unpredictable, but I'm sure this will improve over time. I'll remove scarlet and add white, White adds more grayscale or monochromatic coloring that is on the lighter side. Black will do the same just with darker colors, and gray of course is just neutral. One limitation of the recoloring is that it can only apply color themes to the entire image. You cannot localize edits to a specific area or object. It would be really useful to either drag and drop color swatches to apply them to certain areas, or eventually use the prompt to describe where the colors should go. For example, I could say green skin with red eyes. I don't get that now, but in the future I might. If you hover over an iteration, in the top left there is a button to shuffle the colors. Based on the name, I would expect this to juxtapose the current colors to reassign them to different areas of the artwork. Instead, this will randomize the colors to make more variations of the design. It doesn't really shuffle the colors so much as it replaces them with something else. It's essentially like clicking the refresh button, only faster. In the top right of each iteration is a download button you can use to save the image as an SVG. Or you can use the options button to copy the image to your clipboard and paste it directly into Adobe Illustrator or any other application that supports pasting SVG data. This might be a faster way to save multiple iterations because you can place them into a single document. That does it for recoloring a simple image with Adobe Firefly, but I'm sure you're wondering what the limitations are. After all, vectors can contain a lot of complex elements like clipping masks and gradient meshes. I'll load some various types of vector images so we can see what works and what doesn't. Let's take it up a notch and try a vector image with gradients. Beneath the upload area, you will see any errors that are present in your image. Although it says some elements are not compatible, the image seems to load just fine. I think what it means is that perhaps the shadow on the ground, which has a blur effect applied to it, cannot be recolored. But everything else, including the gradient, seems to recolor just fine. Here's another more complex vector with gradients. It too can be recolored easily, but again, the shadow effect is not compatible. Let's try a simple image traced photo. This seems to work perfectly fine as well. It ain't pretty, but it's recolored. Now a layout with text, labels, and graphics. That seems to work all right. How about a vector file with gradient meshes? Nope. Gradient meshes are not supported, but it would be a lot cooler if they were. Also not supported are very large and complex image traced photos. In fact, loading one will crash the page and you'll have to reload and start over. I don't know if there were too many colors or the image was too large, but Firefly didn't like it. 
I've not tried importing every single feature in Adobe Illustrator, but it seems like most of the basic features work, while the more proprietary ones do not. Now let's review the quality of the image output. When you download a file from Firefly, it gives you an SVG that looks identical in terms of shapes, but the colors are changed. As far as I can tell, there aren't any imperfections or a loss in quality. If you want to tweak a color, you can still do that in Adobe Illustrator. In fact, all of the layers and labels are still intact. That's awesome! SVG is fine and all, but I would really love to see AI files supported so I don't have to convert everything first. Although, I have a feeling that this recoloring feature will probably be integrated into Adobe Illustrator, so maybe that's not an issue. So, what is this recoloring feature useful for? The most obvious benefit is that it can save you a lot of time. If you need to recolor a vector graphic, you can do it with Firefly in just a few clicks. Second, Firefly can help you create more creative and visually appealing color schemes. Let's say you aren't very good at choosing colors manually. Just pick something, even if it doesn't look good, and let Firefly jazz it up. Third, Firefly's recoloring is perfect for creating multiple designs for shirts and other merchandise. Rather than taking an hour to manually recolor my design to make a dozen iterations, I can do it in seconds. And last, it's possible to utilize recoloring for evaluating color schemes before you or your client makes a decision on the final version. As a designer, I no longer have to waste time producing iterations that will ultimately be discarded. You could even have the client look through color choices on their own time. From a client's perspective, that's saving them money. In conclusion, Adobe Firefly's Recolor Vector feature is a powerful new tool that can save you time and help you create more creative vector graphics. It's not clear whether this feature will be available for non-creative cloud users, but if you're a graphic designer or anyone who works with vector graphics, I highly recommend checking it out. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more content creator videos like this. Thanks for watching and stay creative.